Waitley Select Board meeting to order at 6.05. Uh, first item of business, meeting minutes from our meeting on February 27th. Any comments? No comments. Motion to approve. I move we approve the meeting minutes from. Sorry, this says March 12th. Oh, no, this is. <laughs> from February. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, let's let's approve the meeting minutes from the previous Three. meeting. Any further yeah. discussion? Uh, uh, roll call. Joyce? Aye. Julie? Aye. Me? Aye. Vendor of payroll warrants, any questions? No questions. No questions. Public comment. Do we have any comment from anyone on a subject not on the agenda? No. Public hearing on scheduled appointments. Jenny Morrison, who I see on Zoom, on the Center School RFP, and I see Donna Wiley here also. I think wanting to talk about the same thing. Uh, so, Jenny, are you giving the presentation for the? Well, I I can give it to you as a presentation. I don't really have a lot to contribute beyond what I sent, and I don't. I leave it to you folks to figure out how to make that available to everybody. Um, what I did leave out from that is that seven of the 10 visioning committee people responded and all said, yes, this is from me as well. Um, so this is not just my opinion, it's the majority of the visioning committee that we, we recognize that the RFP committee did the job that was asked for them, but that process is limiting. Um, and many people on the RFP committee also went on record saying they didn't like either proposal. And so the visioning committee is prepared to undertake several tasks to try and create an alternative disposition for the center school than just going ahead with the recommended RFP. And the question is, will you give us time to do that? Um, and I laid out in that um, document, which I emailed to all of you, several very concrete steps that we can commit to, um, to move the process forward, understanding that part of the issue on many people's minds is just that this has taken a long time and, um, that we need to move forward and not just be repeating the same steps. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have your submission here. Donna, do you have, do you want to? Well, add? Joyce and I, uh, Jenny, it, of course, served on the yeah. ad hoc committee. Um, Joyce and I were both at the meeting where we voted our recommendations. Joyce, one of us should present <laughs> our recommendation. We haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. uh, how, should, how do you want to proceed? Yeah, yeah, I thought this was later in the agenda myself, but because uh, there's a place where we're supposed to discuss and vote on that. So I'm a little confused because it looks like it's on the agenda twice somewhere, right? Isn't it under uh, old business? No. Yeah. Or new business? No, it's been moved to an appointment, I guess. So, all right. It's, it's just under the scheduled appointment. Okay. Well, well Donna, is, I'd is, say is, go ahead. You're you're in person there, so that's probably more effective. So, uh, uh, Donna Wiley, just on Plain Road, start of the mission at Hawk Committee. Um, the committee met um, three times, uh, twice we discussed the two responses uh, for about an hour each time. Um, the second time we had the benefit of the AMP responses to the many questions that the committee had uh, submitted through Brian. Um, and uh, we certainly agreed that none of the, neither of the applications is perfect. Um, 
but last Thursday, um, three out of the five of us were present and we voted first, uh, Joyce chaired the meeting, and mm -hmm. first we voted on whether we wish to reject both proposals and the answer was unanimously no. And then we voted to uh, award um, the contract or sign a contract with um, Bob O'Bear. That was, I mean, that's essentially what we yeah. did. It was quite a short meeting because we already had two lengthy discussions. Mm -hmm. um, I'd just like to give a little bit of history, which at least as the select board members know, after the, uh, after the request for a lease agreement failed last year, the Historical Commission met. Our job is, of course, primarily historic preservation of a very important building in town. And we uh, were not convinced that the town was prepared to invest the kind of money that would be required to keep that building safe and authentic. Um, I could go on about the eight, eight year process of town hall, but many of you lived that with us. Um, so we actually, the Historical Commission brought to the select board the, uh, a request that we issue a request for sale. And we agreed together to do that. That was one year ago, that was last March. And then, as you know, we spent about four months hammering out the very lengthy preservation restriction document that would have the teeth that we need to make sure that whoever buys it um, takes care of the building, the exterior of the building. Um, so that my point is really that this has been a long process. Um, I, I uh, saw Jenny's notes. I, I'm speaking for myself because obviously the historical revision hasn't been between 11 o'clock this morning and now. <laughs> when, um, there are some interesting ideas. I wish we had begun working on them in 2020 when the visioning committee concluded its work. I mean, it's another four years. I am very mindful of the impact of every day on the building. Think of the two rainstorms we've had in the last week. Mm -hmm. Just in the last week, three inches both times. And I mean, one of the things that makes this building quite different from Town Hall is that the roof and the exterior structure in Town Hall were essentially sound. Um, and we don't have that benefit this time. So I think that's, I mean, I would go on and on, but I really think that's enough for you. <laughs> so did the, the Ad Hoc Committee made a recommendation to that we should accept the Aubert bid. Yeah. The, the alternative in this case being essentially going back to the drawing board on usage and trying to yeah. craft. Well, that, that's an important point because I was thinking, I mean, Lynn will probably post traumatic stress about this account, but we worked together on this quite a number of people for seven years. And and for town hall and version and version failed. And then the historical commission inserted its hope into the municipal building committee and 10 of us met for two hours. I can't actually remember if it was weekly or bi-weekly for a year and a half, <laughs> hammering out a plan that as you say, encompassed both, encompassed the funding plan, the usage plan yeah. and it, Right, and acceptance by all the all the necessary committees. Um, it, it was it was great. It was over. <laughs> <laughs> and well done. Well, yeah, we, that's the issue. We wanted to right by the town with the building, and do we think that you know, sending it back for? Revisioning the scope and you know, the scope of the project or what we want out of it, weighing the time it's going to take and the wear and tear on the building versus getting it done, and versus mm -hmm. getting it done not necessarily in the way we would want it done. I, I would 
uh, venture to say that it's not necessarily going back to the drawing board and revisioning, that it is starting from having a vision and now working on um, capital campaign and working on how to bring that vision to fruition and figure out which parts of the vision are gonna bring in enough income to keep that building um, paying for itself, essentially. So we're not really going back to the drawing board. We're using the sketches that we have to hit the ground running. That said, I agree that it's very late in the process. Um, I would also say about private fundraising, um, we raised $185,000 in private gifts uh -huh. towards the town hall. That was five of us. That took five and a half years. Okay. I could probably tell you every gift. Yeah. Um, I hadn't thought about this for a while, and obviously there could be new donors, but nearly $50,000 of that could not be renewed. 30 of it was from a foundation, a matching grant that is no longer available to the person whose gifts were matched. Okay. About yep. 15,000 is for people who are dead. Yeah. You know, it isn't that there won't be new donors, but most of the money for the town hall project, and it's a good analogy because it's about the same amount of money, mm -hmm. came from CPA money, so mm -hmm. from the town, from that wonderful windfall when we thought this was never going to be solved when the town sold the cell tower and the finance <laughs> committee signed on. That was 300 of it about, as I recall. Um, but this was this was a very lengthy process. Yeah, yeah. And I think also, if anything, it'll be more difficult to raise money for this building, which at least raising money for town hall is going to be to, for public use. We don't envision a public use for this building. We don't? Well, not in the same way as town hall, but we're looking to either lease it or you know, turn it into a either apartments or offices or something that are not public access uses that the town hall is. I don't that's, I don't yeah. think that's totally accurate because I think the mixed use for the building is really the ideal that there is some privately rented space but also some public space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what and, and I, you know, I totally understand what the concerns are about the process, but like Julie said, I don't think there's ever been any attempt to do a capital campaign on this. And in, you know, just this last five days of talking to people about it, we've already gotten an offer of a bigger donation than what O'Bear's willing to offer for the building. And to me, it just seems, I, I hear people that it's been a long process, but the system has forced the town into certain channels that have meant that we haven't pursued some other channels. And I think there's a real interest in doing that before we just get rid of it. I would also yeah. venture to say that I was really dissatisfied having read both of the proposals. Mm -hmm. I was extremely dissatisfied with both the offers for the building and the property, given what it's valued at, and then given what they wanted to do with it. Um, one, a single family home, which is a huge single family home. And two was a somewhat more nebulous, we're gonna make something kind of nice for the town. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna turn it into high-end apartments. Uh, both of those looked like they did not benefit the town to the degree that I would want them to do. And that they would be benefit the developer and the owner. And it seems to me that we're putting the town in a position of saying, we're a small town, please come in and take advantage of us. And before we take that step and uh, uh, consider it the only step, I would I would recommend that we give the, the visioning committee a little more time to pull something together and present it to us that really has some teeth in it. 
And if it doesn't, then we can then we can go for the RFP responses or put it out to bid again. But but I, I yeah. Think but you're assuming that anyone will take us seriously if we were to put it out to bid again. I honestly, I, I just can I just say what I think, and and this is going to make of course some people feel really bad. But if what was proposed in this email were put into an RFP in this process, I would not have rated that RFP very highly because there's no track record of fundraising. There's no long-term plan. There's no budget as to how this $700 a month is somehow going to pay for this building's operation. Um, there's no clear public use for the building, nobody's suggesting anything that is public use in that building, that there's a rental of a professional space. We need housing. Mm -hmm. We do. And if this be became right. two condos or this became a house, and it's not that big a house as mm -hmm. houses go, I don't think that's the end of the world. But I, I do feel like we've been doing this for a long time. And if there were some sort of groundswell of people who want to pour it's going to be millions and millions of dollars to make that building usable again where the hell are they where have they been for the last uh, x number of years that we've been struggling with trying to figure out what to do with this building and I just, I just don't see what's being proposed as being very realistic. And I'm sorry, I know that's going to hurt people's feelings. I, when we started this whole process, did not want to sell the building. But we don't have a lot of options. We don't have deep pockets. Um, town Hall probably is going to look cheap by the time a project to do something this building is is there and, and people are saying what is it going to be for and it's not clear to me from the this description what is that building going to be for so i've got to say i don't really feel like giving some well-intentioned volunteers more time to get us to the, the same place where we are right now and maybe even a worse place because you can say that there were there may have been shortcomings in this proposal but bob o'bear has a track record he has rehabbed plenty of historic buildings montague's got more housing now because he rehabbed buildings there turned them into apartments and now people can rent them you know it's it's not just, uh, you know, I'm not even sure how to how to express it, but between the where the heck have you been all this time and what is it exactly that you're proposing, I don't really feel solidly like I want to put this building into the hands of this group at this point without some kind of clearer idea of what the heck you want to do with it. I'd be yeah. happy to respond to that. So why would Jenny respond? Um, first of all, the only thing I take offense at is comparing the document we drafted to an RFP because it was never intended to be. Part of the problem is that the RFP proce process the only people who can respond to that are philanthropists or developers who are in the business of doing this kind of rehab. Um, so it wasn't intended to be that. And you're absolutely right. It doesn't spell out an end picture at this point. The request is to have time to generate that. Um, the first I would argue you have had time. You have well, had the first seven years of, to do that. 
And no one has come up with anything in those seven years. The first round of RFPs. So when the visioning committee ended, it wasn't very long before COVID hit. So that's a couple of years that interfered with people working on it. And then there was a round of ideas. Um, I, I hear all of your concerns. They're all valid. And the question of what there is for funding, honestly, I don't think it's been answered from a broader perspective than private individuals willing to do it. That's why we're talking about a capital campaign and, and working on that to have a better idea of what kind of funding could be available. Um, and it, But from what I heard, and Donna just repeated it, the immediate issue is that the building is deteriorating because it needs roof work. And, you know, that's the first thing that needs to be tackled. I, I think that it makes sense to look at CPA funds to do that with the hope of the town keeping the building and having benefited from that. Um, yes, the town needs housing. I'm not at all convinced that the town needs another high-end single family house, which is what Aubert proposed. Um, and while the last meeting of the RFP committee included three people, there are other people who would have voted to reject both proposals. Um, so, I just, I think, I hear your concern, but I think the comparison is not valid. And if what you're asking for is a guarantee of funding, I can't make that happen, but I can generate other steps as have been outlined that the visioning committee is willing to stand behind but there's no point in doing that unless the select board is going to give us the time to try and do that. Um, how? What is our commitment to either of the responders to the RFP in terms of an answer? When? When are they expecting an answer? And what kind of time are you looking for, Jenny? I believe that we're supposed to... Um hold their their deposits until the 15th and then get back to them with a response i think there is an option to request an extension if they're willing to to agree to one to allow us more time uh -huh. an option to request it was, it was, some, you're right it was a 90 day period and the proposals came in in december 13th okay um may i comment yeah. on that I, I think another um contextual uh consideration um has to do with thinking about the town's appetite for funding capital projects. Mm -hmm. We know that we will have to contribute something that will seem a lot to Waitley for the South County Senior Center. Mm -hmm. We know that we have the highway department's needs coming along. Um, I'm I'm not, I don't know what the dollar amounts for, are for those because I'm not on the you don't finance want to know. committee anymore. I don't want to, <laughs> but I just, I think it's important whenever we're thinking about capital outlay to think what, what do we have on our plates in the near term? Mm -hmm. And those are both in pretty near term. Mm -hmm. Yep, good points. Yeah. Can I just make some comments on the um, recommendations yeah. that Jenny supplied? Um, a couple of these are kind of not possible given the town's requirements under procurement laws and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, even just going out for the roof bid, depending on the cost of yeah. that, you know, it it can be very costly. Um, we wouldn't be able to like acquisition of building supplies at a reduced rate because we can't do that. 
as a municipality. So there's a lot of considerations there that um, the town's hands are tied on a lot of those things because of procurement law. Mm -hmm. so. so is there an option to trans, you know, is there a friends of the center school option that can long, do that kind of thing? As long as the town owns the building, we have to follow those procurement laws. Jenny, you could buy the building for 6000 than anybody else has put in. It, it would be a higher bid than anyone else has put in. And you know, Sending honestly, you I would need to do with it. Honestly, I would think about it if I had more time. I mean, I never it never occurred to me to put in a bid like that because I don't think things should function like that. But I I'm you know, I'm really not happy with the thought of the town giving this building away for a thousand dollars. Honestly, I feel like, you know, putting out a, a RFP that says we're going to give away a building to the group that tells us their best plan for it is a better option. And I don't really feel like that's the same as what the RFP process has been so far. That's an interesting thing. Good choice. I think, yeah, I, what I've learned over the last couple of years in, in relation to the center school is that it will take a lot of money for not a lot of square feet. I know people have said this would be some kind of high-end house. There are not that many square feet in that building. It would not be a large footprint sort of house if it becomes a house for or a home for somebody. Um, honestly, I have to say at the start, I was in favor of demolishing the building and making it a park, honestly. But I understand that the entire Waitley and State Historical Commissions would rain hellfire down on me <laughs> if that were to try and happen. So. That can't happen. I thought that would be a great public use of that land. And the to me, the thing that it comes down to is we don't have the money. No individual has come forward with philanthropically or otherwise the money yeah. to take care of that building. So in our capitalist society, we are turning to the free market. And yes, Someone is going to benefit from that, but they're going to have to do a freaking lot of work and they're going to have to put their own millions of dollars into it in order to just keep that building and make it still function. So it's really a choice between having a building that's functional with capital resources that are not coming from the town because we don't have that kind of money. I mean, we can you know, we can barely afford our senior center, and we're going to need a new highway garage. And I don't know, or is there's just so many things competing with it that have real solid public purposes. And the center school, where no one's proposing some kind of solid public purpose that we absolutely need to have. And I would I I feel in many ways the same way you do. I don't really want the town to lose that piece of land. But the other choice is to just let that building decay more <laughs> than it already has. And then it will be. Then I'll get my wish. The whole thing will fall down. We'll have to demolish it and it'll become a public park. So, <laughs> so you know, I mean it's it it just that's a I, reason to vote for it, Joyce. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Jenny, I don't think you ever answered Julie's question. How much, about time? how much time you would need to put something with, with some teeth? With, with, yeah, teeth, more solid numbers. 
together. It, it really would be about coming in with a very solid business and financial plan. I don't have a good answer to that question. I would need help from people who, I mean, I've done this. I've bought houses and rehabbed them, but I didn't have to come up with the whole plan in advance. Um, I, I was quite shocked by some of the quotes, like $50,000 to take out the cement steps in one of the proposals, one of the RFPs, I don't remember which one. Um, and I have not been in the building for years. So I don't have an answer for how much time it needs. You all probably have more experience with what's a reasonable answer to that question than I do. So I guess the question for us today comes down to, do we vote on you know, accepting an RFP or do we try to get an extension and give Jenny at least some more time to come up with something? I don't know, but I can't see giving more than you know another two weeks or so. You know, we can't just let this. Yeah. Hang out there forever. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Can I ask a question that people on the ad hoc committee would probably know the answers to? Um, was either of the proposers planning to use CPA funding from the town? The um, the uh, folks, Sear and Gellarmini, yes. One of the, I gather you have not. Review the responses. I have not seen their, their responses. The, no. The additional questions. No. Uh, Sierra and Gellarini were counting very heavily on CPA money ah. and um, did not respond to a specific question we posed, which is was of the million five or six that you say this project will cost you, how much were you hoping would come from the CPA? Right. It's just a lot of words. Um, <laughs> not, uh, not, enough. not enough numbers. Um, Obear does not is not hoping to use CPA money. He is um, planning to use uh, federal and state tax credits, and he's had that approved already for the blue school and used it uh, extensively at the three buildings that he rehabbed in Turner's Falls, which are very nice mm -hmm. and were done according to the to the federal historic preservation standards. Um, it would be faster for him to get approved for those tax credits for this project than it has been for the center for the excuse me for the uh, blue school because it's in a national historic district and because we will he will have to sign the preservation restriction mm -hmm. document and there is not one on the school district mm -hmm. that project by the way just to the to the bid I'm afraid we may have been um uh, we may have been, uh, our two respondents may have been prejudiced because the school district, which owned the Blue School, sold it to O'Bear for $1,000. Mm -hmm. And the building is much larger than the center school, and it might have been all through both buildings in much better shape. And this is just. I'm my... not making that up. You are that <laughs> so, This is just for my curiosity. Um, did O'Bear said that he was going to do affordable housing in the blue school? No. I yes. Don't yeah. I, don't, I think a quarter of it is. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, affordable housing or low income housing. I don't think so. Was that for the blue school? That's the blue school. In, in in that in that building, not the second building that he had proposed. That um, twenty five percent of the whole thing. So when he has ten apartments in the main building three of them will be uh affordable housing and then whatever he builds outside that also has to be 25 percent rounding up if it doesn't if there's if it's four right then uh, but rounding up if the number is odd yeah. there is no longer a second building there's no okay the CBA. and i was asking because i had read an article in the paper but it was a good six to eight months ago about the whole thing being high-end 
housing, and I don't know if that's true. That's useless. Yeah. In, in applications, there's like, like 70,000 dollars the income range you're starting. So, so that we were talking affordable, not low income. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Just catching myself up. The Thank other you. thing to to point out about the Obeyers um, application, which was um, casual in some ways, mm -hmm. the the response to the uh, additional questions is more precise. Um, he is very clear that although his initial proposal was for a single house, he reserves the right to make some changes and consider other uses, which is standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, uses within the uses that are permitted by the special permit that the historical commission approved for the bill of rock, whenever that was approved. Are the questions and the responses public? Can can I read those at some point? <laughs> well, they're certainly public to you. You're the select board. Yeah, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I, would have asked, I didn't realize that, or I would have asked to see them previously. I just I thought they were just for the ad hoc committee, and then you know, mm. learn something every day. Uh, okay, so we've got to determine what what actions we or non actions <laughs> we're going to take or not take today. Okay. Uh, based on the recommendations of the ad hoc, can we at least reject the one proposal, the non obeyer proposal, and say, you know, based on the recommendations, we will not be going in that direction? Regardless of what else we did, Justin okay. Sear and Daniel yeah. Gellarmini. Yeah, um, that was not a recommended proposal, and you know, just to let them know that that it would not be accepted. If, if we were going to accept a proposal, it would be a bear. Yeah, and. Just Are we allowed to sort of make a half decision like that? You may just want to make a decision, like if you want to extend right. the yeah. RFP, if, just extend it in okay. general, and then once okay. you decide what you're going to do, like if you say two weeks, right. then make that, and um, you'll have to contact both parties and let them know, ask them if they're willing to extend, okay. um, but or will have to. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, the the town will have the to. The town will have to um, and ask each of the parties if they're willing to extend, but I don't know that I narrow. I okay. mean, you could, yeah. but I think yeah. it might make more sense to just. Okay. Well, yes. The grapevine, you don't want somebody to hear that one has been rejected, leaving the other one mm -hmm. wondering. Yeah. yeah. So so I would yeah. just. Okay. <laughs> that makes awesome. sense. So, but we will have to get in contact with both of them very soon to make that extension. I think it was the 15th yeah. of December. It was it's 90 days there. from December 13th. Oh, okay. that March 15th? I, right, right. I thought that it was from this. If it was the 13th, we might have a problem, but um, I thought it was the 15th. But I'm sorry, I'm not stepping. Okay. Right. So, I think mean, Jenny, I think probably the, at least I would be in favor of giving you two weeks and, you know, to see if you can put some more flesh on the bones of this idea, but that we, we really can't go much beyond that. Yeah, I mean, there's... I yeah, I would agree with that. I know that's I know that's really, two weeks really being tight. for our next meeting. It, it's tight, and I'm not even home um, until almost two weeks from now. Um, you know, not that I'm not able to reach people. Um, can you give me more concrete what you are looking for? I would want a solid business plan, like who's gonna who's gonna use the building in a way that's going to make it um, financially feasible once it's renovated, and I would want um, some at least the beginnings of solid financials about who's going to pay for the renovations. Is that 
So, yeah, and and maybe attach some dollar signs. You know how much uh, you'd be looking for in you know at a CPA or you know state funds. You know ballpark, not anything to be held to, but at least. You know, if you say you're looking for $2 million of CPA funds, that's, we know that we can't do that. You know, not a reasonable request. Okay. I mean, I can try and I can use the RFP proposals to work off of, but, you know, even if I were home, I'm not sure what contractors I could get in there to give me quotes in that amount of time. I don't know that we're asking for quotes from contractors. Okay. Yeah. You may get an idea from the from the RFP documents what um what other people think it will take. Uh, yeah, I, but, I'm um, just looking here. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Joyce Bennett. We're we're our job is to kind of do not kind of is just to, to make decisions that are best for the town. And things that would not be in our interest is a project that we think will fail. Right. right. And and at least one of the RFPs was doomed to failure based on their business plan. Okay. That that would that would not, and so it doesn't help us to have a plan that doesn't look like it can succeed. And uh not and no no plan is guaranteed to succeed, but a plan has to like financially succeed and it's it's gotta you know, obey all the laws, <laughs> all right? Right, so, which, which I don't know all the laws for municipal buildings, so I would definitely need help from Lynn or Sylvie for, for that piece. Yeah, I'm, I'm maybe, just looking... Maybe there's other people on the visioning committee who do, but Lynn already raised some concerns that I didn't know. Yeah. So, well, one step might be to get a private, somebody private to buy the building. For six thousand dollars, and then but, and but then no, 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 hold on, hold on. You oh, you, oh, you put it. That, don't put it that way, Julie. That's not at all what the process was about. It's not about how much is somebody going to pay for the building. It was not let's sell this to the higher bidder. We wanted to do that. Just put it on the real estate market. Yeah, and let anybody. Which I'm told you couldn't. And the rest of my statement was going to be now tell us how you're going to come up with the two million dollars that you need to renovate it. Well, and, well, and, and I think and I don't just, think we you know, can waylay a public bidding process no, anyway. That no, is, no, that's yeah. the most important. That's the most no, important. No, because we would have to approve the sale, and we wouldn't yeah. approve a sale so with, with no plan. Yeah, I, I just wanted to be sure that we are very clear on what is and is not possible with CPA funding. Mm -hmm. It must be work that is carried out to the standards, the National Historic Preservation Standards. It yeah. cannot be done yeah. on the cheap. And given that I, I don't actually understand what is now being, what Jenny's the committee is now proposing for the interior of the building, but the presumption all along has been that the interior will be more or less gutted. Mm -hmm. Well, that means nothing <laughs> that's done inside the building is likely to be eligible for CPA money, and we don't actually have very much. You know, so so right. we want to be really cautious yep. about what we imagine is possible. Thank you. Yep. Right. Yeah. Well, I I I'm that's what I thought, which actually is was confusing given hearing re we're recommending Obear who said both he's going to change the facade for market appeal and use slate looking asphalt shingles if he can't afford slate shingles. So that's not consistent with what you just said. There so are, I, there are federal yeah. standards for the use of substitute materials. It's a 24 page mm -hmm. document. We don't we don't have to read it right now. I I, I do not agree that that's exactly what this proposal said. Okay. Okay. And I, yeah, I mean again, I wasn't able to raise those questions in those discussions, but okay. 
Um, so, just, uh, just wanted to um, confirm that the proposals were received on the 13th. Um, so we'll want to reach out to them by tomorrow and just discuss the uh, extensions. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jenny, what we'd be looking for is just some idea or e even a ballpark figure of what the total cost of the project you'd be, you know, would want to see. And you, know, you say things like organization of a capital campaign to raise funds to raise that much and putting a dollar figure to that. And, mm -hmm. not, and this is, wouldn't be a binding right. thing. It's just that there'd be some idea of. You, you need more framework. Of, a framework of the project and how much in rough ballpark terms you would think should be raised from the various funding sources you envision. Uh, you know, we're not looking for a proposal such as we would have gotten back from an RFP, but at least something to give an idea of what you're talking about financially. Okay. Well, all of that said, we have these RFPs in hand. Yeah. And those are our choices. It would be really good. But if you answered in detail, the same kinds of things that people who wrote the RFP would have to do. I, and, I, I, and I don't know if that gets us into trouble with with uh, with the law in sort of let, you know letting someone send in an, uh, uh, something as effectively an RFP well, well beyond the deadline. Um, but it, I know I mean, Fred is trying to make maybe you know make things sound very gentle, but I, honestly, I, I would honestly, if you if there's not something that I really think is going to work and that you can really really get funding for, it's not going to be in the best interest of the town. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that's really the bottom line. This has got to be in the best interest of the town. And well, it can't be something that's going to start out. Where we agree is plot. that where you where we agree is that what's in the best interests of the town is something that actually is going to happen and be fulfilled. We definitely agree on that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So, Joyce, Julie, how do you do? You think we should give Jenny two weeks? to come back with something which may or may not be I, I would be okay with with waiting I mean Chase is not gonna make a difference on anybody's schedule. So yeah I'd be I'd be okay with two weeks. Jenny I realize we're setting you a hard task but I also hear very much what Joyce is saying that this yeah. has been long in the process and what you're running into is that everybody's tired and just wants to get it done. And I really appreciate what Donna said about the other avenue needs of the town. It's like we're a town with a lot of needs and not enough funding to address everything yeah. that we care about. Okay. Yeah. And essentially, Jenny, what, what we're looking for is something that is sufficiently detailed yeah. and both as to purpose and finances oh, okay. well, that would cause us to reject, you know, to go back to the RFP process, which, which we would have to do. That we, we can't just say no to what we've gotten and award it someplace else. We would have to go just by law, we would have to go back and solicit I, I, proposals. I, I, I think I am, I've gotten confused. Yeah. I thought that what Jenny was proposing was for the town to retain the ownership of the building. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And right now I will sound like I'm arguing for something I don't okay. support, but I don't, I think that is the only way. It's possible. Cool. I'm not an attorney. Yeah. <laughs> to do it without an RFP. But I think that is the only way we can consider an alternate to the two, as you say, the two applicants who met our legally yeah. designed process. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think the, the question we face in two weeks is do we accept 
one or the other of the RFPs or do we reject both? That's mm -hmm. the question that we have to decide in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do we need a movement? Uh, we will need a motion because we're going to need to ask for extensions for the two RFP submitters since we're supposed to get back to them by tomorrow. I move that we request of the two RFP submitters that they um, indulge us in an additional two weeks to make determinations. And I will second that. Any further discussion? No. Vote, Julie. Hi. Joyce. Well, I'm going to abstain. I'm going to set this one out. I'll abstain. And I'll vote for it. So, Jenny, if you can, you know, come back in two weeks with something, or you know, if you don't think sometime during that period that you will be able to have it, just let us know. Yeah. Yep. But okay. we, we, we are aiming to vote in two weeks on the proposals that came in from the RFP. Okay. And I want to say out loud that your care and concern is noted. And I think it mirrors the care and concern that everybody else in the town has regarding that building. So. I would agree. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think that's good for that item. Donna, do you have anything else to add? Nope. Uh, COVID-19 tests continue to be available at town offices, library, and the police station. Uh, next, to review and discuss the request for the Board of Assessors to release surplus funds contained in the overlay reserve account. We have not heard anything. Um, have not heard their meeting on next Wednesday to discuss that topic. Okay, so we presumably will have something from them for our next meeting. Yeah. Okay. New business. To review discussing vote on a deadline to submit articles for the June 4th, 2024 town meeting. Mm -hmm. There's a um, proposed calendar in your packet. Oh, backing up from the date of annual town meeting and our posting requirements and the necessary time for the board and Here. the CR. Oh, okay, I've got to quickly read. Uh, deadline for receipt of all warrant articles would be Monday, May 6th. Select board reviews and votes on warrant articles, May 14th. Finance committee recommendations due on May 21st. Aiming to have the select board sign the annual town meeting warrant somewhere in the period of May 23rd to May 28th in anticipation of the June 4th annual town meeting. Any dispute or Seems issues reasonable. with that timetable? Now, if anybody yeah. out there in the public wants yeah. to submit an article that they might not have all the detail for that article, as long as they can get it to yeah. us before that May 6th, just so that we can put a placeholder in there. Yeah, um, sure. that would be great. Okay. Um, yeah. You need a vote on this? I move that we approve the annual town meeting proposed calendar and submit it. There you go. I will second. second. Either one of them. Uh, any further discussion, comments? Well, Joyce? Aye. Julie? Aye. Aye. Next item to review discuss and vote on whether to increase the pay rate for the administrative assistance position. I'm not sure I did. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't like that. Before he left, Ryan Dunn put in, sent us a letter, this left with a letter. That's good because I have, I gave my copy and, away. And today. how do they imagine that? Uh, I didn't have the email, so. Okay, Brian had submitted it. Uh, yeah, how can they imagine a more successful Catholic? That um, the administrative assistant position, currently held by Jessica, be increased due to the remarkable job she's basically doing. And, <laughs> 
Um, I let me go get the letter. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I didn't. <clears throat> when Luke gets back, it's actually going to break down into two different discussions. One of compensation for Jessica during the period of an interim administrator, and then the question of do is that a pay raise that gets put permanently, you know, into the budget and funded for fiscal year twenty five and beyond. So there really are two different or two elements of the same discussion. Um, because I assume at the moment in the budget, it would be at the old rate. So we'd have to amend the budget request from. For March 25? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll wait for Lynn to get back with that letter. But there are the, the two different elements of this. No, oh, that's, that's I'm going to go get, fill up my water bottle here. Okay, sorry. You don't sorry. break. Sorry, that's guys. Okay. That was my fault. Okay. <laughs> um. So, as my friend uh, Brian writes. Yeah. As my last town administrator action for Waitley, I would request that the personnel committee and select board consider a pay increase for Jessica Murphy. Jessica's current pay rate is $22.76 per hour as the administrative assistant, which seems low considering the recent inflation and the responsibilities that Jessica now undertakes. Jessica goes above and beyond what has been asked of her, and she handles so much of the day-to-day -day operations independently. She has taken initiative to learn about other aspects of the town's operations and is quick learning the town clerk role as the assistant town clerk and is doing the administrative work for the Community Preservation Committee. <clears throat> Jessica is courteous, friendly, and helpful to all residents and directs them appropriately to get the questions answered. The tra transition from the interim TAs to the permanent TA will be successful because of Jessica. She knows her stuff and is a huge asset to this office. She has willingly stepped up during this time of transition. I'm happy to have worked with her. I haven't had the time to look at comparable pay rates, but a pay increase somewhere in the range of 2 or $3 seems appropriate in my estimation. In my opinion, it's important to keep excellent people, and the pay rate somewhere in the range of 25 to 26 doesn't seem out of line. And if I understand correctly, the personnel committee took this up last night? Yes, correct. And what did the personnel committee have to say? Joyce, I'll defer to you if you want to report to the members. Mm, okay. Um, well, um, <laughs> I guess I want to make sure I get three things out there. One um, is that um, the current process we normally use for uh, making recommendations about uh, pay raises for position titles is problematic. And that's why we're trying to get a wage classification study done so that we can do this differently in years to come. We're hoping this is the last year that we use the, the system we have. The system we have, uh, but using comparison towns, uh, says that our administrative assistants are paid something like 11% higher than the median or the average for our comparison towns. So generally speaking, the personnel committee wouldn't necessarily recommend and um, a raise for that position, given the way we've done things in the past. Um, the personnel committee, though, thought that, especially appreciated in Brian's letter, that Jessica's kind of going above and beyond a normal uh, administrative assistant, and that um, we should definitely do something for this interim period uh, where Jessica's taking on more responsibilities than you would normally expect. Um, then um, we're hoping that the wage classification, so the classification study might help us do something like, um, you know, if we, you know, administrative assistant covers a lot of ground <laughs> and maybe there is a way to uh, classify this job such that um, it can really fairly 
compensate people like Jessica who take the initiative and are just superstars at being at, at this job. Um, so I, I think that at the end of the meeting was that we definitely want to do something for the interim. Um, we don't know how well a recommendation of a higher salary for that position would go over with the finance committee, given what our normal comparisons are. But we did talk about uh, the possibility of instead raising the number of hours um, in, because that is that is one thing the finance committee responds well to. And uh, I don't know that we had one like big recommendation that we voted on. We did not vote to raise that position, but we did all agree that we should do something certainly through June 30th. Um, and if we can think of something else to do after that, like, I don't know, administrative assistant, you know, first class, I, 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 I don't know what to, what to do. Uh, because, because if the problem with raising the salary for the position is that when Jessica, I don't know, moves on to become town clerk after Amy becomes the treasurer and didn't. Yeah. The other Amy becomes like emperor dictator of the world, um, <laughs> wherever she's heading. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody just moves up, right? Um, then you have someone completely inexperienced, maybe doing the job at, you know, and and because you we have to kind of when it's when you're trying to decide the the salary for a position or the hourly rate for a position. Um, you kind of have to separate that from the person. And if we can find a way to um, to compensate the person for all the extra thing that she's doing, that seemed like a better way to go. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's kind of as far as the discussion got. Is that, does that seem about right, Tricia? Did I miss anything important there, you think? I think they did come up with a final recommendation, Joyce, but correct me if I'm wrong. So it was a very thoughtful discussion. Um, and, you know, I think everyone has a clear sense that even though Jess um, is a great employee, as we have great employees here in the office, um, we have to always be mindful that it is the position and not the person, um, which always makes it difficult. But that um, during this interim period, and indeed when the new town administrator starts, depending on their education and experience um, coming to the town, Jess will be probably doing some extra double duty for a while. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they didn't want to go beyond June 30th because we don't know who's going to be sitting right. here, um, hopefully by July 1. So um, after considering whether it should be a stipend or in recognition of what Joyce said, about the fact that with the salary survey that we do have, that's not really fully complete from surrounding comparable towns, but gives us a good idea. They didn't want to create any precedent, but I think that they were comfortable recommending um, five hours extra a week uh, for Jess through June 30th at her current weight, um, which she was amenable to. And I think they recognized that the select board was meeting tonight so that we could pass that on to the finance committee if you were inclined to vote that this evening. Mm -hmm. Is that your recollection, Jess? The, so Jess recollects yeah. that to you, Joyce, if you're okay with that. Okay, so if we can- Yeah, I, I think Trisha has, has said it better. Yeah. Okay, so, so we can deal with that and then maybe at our next, get on the agenda for the next meeting, what we want to do by, you know, whether we want to continue with the extended hours or raise the pay, I don't know, the personnel committee will meet again before that. Though. Actually, they've scheduled April 1st okay. for a meeting just in the context of the overall um, budget stuff for compensation for employees and hoping they can get additional uh, data from other communities. Uh, okay. in the and, and the budget meetings. won't be finalized, so we, yeah. we will have time to discuss that. And then if we look to increase the total compensation for the position, we can put that into the budget for the plans go back to the plans committee with that. Okay, so uh, in case I think we're looking at a motion to raise the number of hours for 
the assistant administrator by five hours per week from retroactive to uh, March 5th, I guess, which is when Brian left. Mm -hmm. uh, and I need to help turn on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning, how to, I'm learning how to use the camera on you. <laughs> I'm better. Everything. Uh, right but raising the hours from March 5th through June 30th of this year. So, that, so I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? No. Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. Done. The next item to review discussion vote on the Waitley Historical Society milk bottle request for a permanent easement to keep the milk bottle at the current location. Neil, do you want to speak to that? No. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. And we have your letter. Yes, thank you. Um, I wrote the letter on the presumption that you would have been deciding at this meeting which of the uh, responses to the request for proposals uh, would be uh, selected by the select board and therefore you would move be moving towards negotiating with whoever you approved uh, the uh, the terms and conditions in detail about uh, how the, the work would proceed i know that the uh, special uh, ad hoc committee had some discussion about um, both the part of the RFP that said that the town would slice the milk bottle and adjacent land out of the property and that would not be sold but, but would be retained by the town and so uh, I presumed it would be timely to act on um, various things, including the um, what we hope would be a town-granted easement for the uh, milk bottle and a protection of uh, minimum amount of property around the milk bottle, uh, and that that would also, in the course of negotiating with whoever got the, uh, the purchase approval, uh, how any uh, construction fence would be created to protect the milk bottle if they're going to park construction trailers or construction equipment in the front of the building while they work on the building? Uh, how do you prevent uh, either damage to the trees? That's commonly done. They put up barriers to protect trees, which would be on town property. Uh, and how would it be the contractor's responsibility, I would presume, to uh, protect the town property from being damaged during the, the work. But all that presumes that you have decided to sell the center school. And since you have delayed that, uh, I don't know how, other than perhaps talking about some of the ideas in my letter, I don't know that you know exactly yet what to do if you ultimately accept the proposal to retain the all the property and the building as town property, then there's no need to slice it into two pieces. But um, the Historical Society would like some greater assurance of the um, suitability of the location for the milk bottle and protection of the milk bottle from um, signs and lights and various other things that um, would reduce the historical significance of that. Um, so, so I don't know whether you want to defer this until the meeting where you make a decision about uh, the property itself. Um, and, or, or we can talk about it in principle, but I don't know that you can resolve it until you know whether or not you've actually decided to sell. Uh, well, I also think that we can't, we, we shouldn't really grant an easement without an actual plan of A, how the property is going to be, the property line is going to be redrawn to encompass the milk bottle and B, where exactly that easement would run. Would it run from the driveway? Would it run from the street? Where on the street that we would need, you know, an actual survey of the land with actually drawn out of what, where the easement lines would run. 
agreed. And in the RFP, which the town issued for responses, yeah. it said it would do that. Yeah. And, right. So, so I, I think I think that we need to move that along. But while we can agree with the concept and uh, you know, ideas put forward in your letter, until we've got some you know, a real survey in front of us to say that we've proved this easement in this location, we couldn't, which, which probably will not come, well, certainly not before we have the, because that's got a good change in the property lines, gonna have to go to planning board, does that have to go? And that is whether, I mean, if you're talking an easement, it would be- Well, we we're talking to one, we need to move the property line such that the milk bottle comes into town property rather than on the, Assuming the sale of the central property, that it gets into the the town right of way side of okay, that then, property, then rather, that would, rather than the center school building side. Um, an easement that people would still own the right. property, but gives the town right gives the town right. the right to access it. If you want it to actually remain town property, then it would have to go through the planning board. And I personally, I would rather see it on town property rather than simply an easement on someone else's property. The, the yeah. RFP said that the town would redraw the boundaries so right. that the milk bottle stayed on town property. Yeah. Right, it just were... matters whether it's going to be town property or not. So they haven't made that decision. So it's right. like... <laughs> like right. I, 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 think, I, I think what we were trying to say is that we, we kind of did that if we were to sell that plot, we would carve out that portion to remain on town property. And, so, and I think we should, we should carve it out anyway, even if we end up, if you know, Jenny comes back with a plan that calls for you know a town usage that we like, I still think we should redraw that line. Yeah, historical society right. property. Well, the, no, to make, to get it into the, the right of way, essentially for Chestnut, Plain, Christian, like whatever. Oh, okay. uh, draw, draw the line so that the property line bumps is now closer to the building, but that it would be on town property rather than if we sold the property. I would rather see it on town property than simply an easement on someone else's land. Um, so I, so yeah, I think it's a question. My question now. was going to be for Lynn and Krista. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just said. I have a question about um, an easement because because in the the question I have is you know in, in my mind if we were like right now we own the property and we don't need to give the historical society an easement to go there they can just go there right because it's owned by the town and well any of us can go there really um, if the town still owns Say 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 the the land gets sold, but we've carved out a portion for the still town owned land. Mm -hmm. Do we need an easement if the town owns the land? So, so and me, I'm say, thinking that this well, is more of a legal question. Let, like, let me say, that, 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 yeah, hold on, Neil. Right term, um, uh, but what we were looking for, and which we were looking for four years ago was that the town would provide assurance that this was a place where the milk bottle could stay. And so we so use the term the easement okay. we use the term easement in that sense that the town would say the milk bottle could stay there. Uh, right. And so uh, all we need is walking access. We can park on the shoulder of the road and walk okay. up. We don't need yeah. driveway access. We just right. we just because walk. the milk bottle is not owned by the town. Putting it on town property and granting the easement to the historical society protects the historical society as opposed to the current way where it's on town land, but there's no specific right. protection for the oh, historical society. Yeah. Okay. No, I can't use the word. Yeah. yeah. So I, I feel like we keep coming back to this topic and we keep agreeing that we're going to let the historical society do all these things. And I don't understand why we keep coming back to it. <laughs> and be, I, because I, select I, boards change and town policies change, and this would protect 
the historical society in the future. Right. Oh, I understand. But we made that decision every single time. I just feel like we keep coming back to it. And it's not the time to sign the documents yet, right? But so is, is this an exercise of us assuring the historical society that, yes, we absolutely intend to do this? Or is this an exercise of, like, is it actually something new that's being proposed? No, this is an exercise in we need to, we need to do this. We need to do to move along and find a surveyor and pay the surveyor to draw a, give us a survey of that area and draw a proposed easement line for us to look at the same way as the planning board or zoning board of appeals looks at blueprints for where a house is going to be. And that's going on the next town meeting warrant, right? To get the money for the survey. So, like, we can't do any look and see whether there's well, money available until we get that money appropriated, right? Well, if it's available within some operating, because okay. I, I, my understanding from, yeah, yeah, from my from from other meetings, it seemed like we needed an appropriation, and that's what we were waiting on, to do an appropriation. We need to get. A survey done at a either special or a, or an annual town meeting. Where that money is going to come from, whether it comes from some mm -hmm. funding that is currently approved, or whether we have to go. It matters the dollar amount, I think, is to mm -hmm. how, you know how much a survey of that nature will so cost. So I I think we need to go out and get a couple of bids from surveyors yeah. to for what it's going to take to do. Yeah, to, to do. I yeah. I can't imagine that it's going to be. Yeah. I, I would okay. just add a survey done on my property so at 2500 so okay. I think you're... Well, that's fine, but uh, I think you can instruct you. Just, Let, let's yeah. get moving on this. Yeah, let's... <laughs> I'm sorry, Julie. Okay, I'm moving on. I'm like, why, why didn't this get three months ago? <laughs> I have a question about the fourth paragraph, um, Neil. The minutes of multiple meetings in 1995 clearly indicate the Board of Selectmen's intent to provide a permanent home, although no legal protection was provided at this time, at that time. This is an opportune time to turn that intent into permanent protection. So right. if we get a survey done, is that permanent protection for the milk If we get a survey done and grant an easement, easement. To the, to the Historical Society for both the location okay. of the milk bottle and some a path or whatever, All right. even across the grass. That gives that you what you're looking for. Right. It's recorded and then it's recorded. Right, right. Recorded the registry of deeds. And then that gives the Historical Society permanent right to have that lot of, you know, that yep. 10 by 10 or whatever it is, yep. land and the access to it. Yep. Okay. Okay. So... If we can get just move this we'll along, this along. Okay. Neil, with whatever speed we can do, we will move this along. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate that. Thank and, you. Okay, uh, and I don't think that any of that requires a vote. It's just big now where the getting the bids and finding where the money to pay for the survey is coming. I'll, I'll just remind you that the, our request is that however that line is drawn, it provides at least a six foot perimeter around, sorry, six foot uh, distance away from the milk bottle as being on town property. Uh, and so not drawing whatever this boundary line is that you might have the surveyor do, not drawing that so close to the milk bottle mm -hmm. that wouldn't be protected yep. on all sides. Yep, that, that would be... Okay. In, in the instructions to the surveyor. Thank you. Okay. Next item, to review, discuss, and possibly vote to appoint the animal inspector for the town of Wake. But Well, <laughs> this is a little bit of a quandary because um, our current animal inspector, we normally do appointments in June. The current animal inspector, who's also our animal control officer, has indicated that he does not want to be reappointed. Um, after talking with Jim, um, we'll combine I, item D I was and gonna say, I was going to say, those two <laughs> seem to be the same. Um, the, the county sheriff's office has a program, a regional yeah. animal control program. Um, the second document is a uh, uh, agreement of 
um, their services. And in talking to Jim Savini, it's my understanding, and I didn't get a chance to um, follow up on this, that they may also be able to provide animal inspection services, uh, which would resolve both of our issues. The timing is, is difficult because MDAR wants the appointments by April 1st. And it's most likely that the animal control program won't start until July 1st. Mm -hmm. So I haven't talked to um, Rick Adamchek to see if he would be willing to continue on as animal inspector until which time July 1st rolls around that we could be part of this other program, um, which might be the best solution, just keep him on. There's not an awful lot of work to do under the animal inspection program right now. The barn book's already been done. Um, so he might be willing, and because he said he didn't want to be reappointed in June, he might be willing to carry out the duties until June of animal inspector. Mm -hmm. um, I will get in touch with him and talk to him about that if that's something you'd like to consider. The um, in looking at the agreement for the animal control services, it appears, was the 5,000 in here or in the email? I see 5,200. Yeah, yeah. That. So right now we budget about 4,800, I think, for the animal control officer. Um, so this would be 5,200, a little bit more, but for the services that they're providing and the accessibility that they're providing, it sounds like it would be a, a good deal because they're, they're available during the day where right now our animal control officer is available after four o'clock. Um, and they also have the resources to handle these complaints. They have, um, if they run into a situation at a particular you know, if they, the dog is causing problems and they arrive on the scene and then the family causes problems, they actually have the powers to take over the situation and, mm -hmm. you know, if there needs to be an arrest or whatever. So they have those capabilities where our present animal control officer would have to call in the police to come to the scene. And so it seems like a really good program. I haven't talked to the other towns that are already in, involved in this, and we'll, I can follow up on that um, this week and just see how they're, you know, how it's working for them. Mm -hmm. And then I also contact Rick and see if he'd be willing to keep up with his responsibilities until um, July 1st, if we could start this program for the next fiscal year. And they also have an advisory committee, so the select board would appoint one person and an alternate that meets once a year to go over the operations and share concerns and experiences. So um, that's another added benefit. So we would want to make our intent known relatively soon so that we can say we'd like to start on July 1st, but it has to go, the sheriff's office has to approve your application and then the um, the committee, the advisory committee also has to approve it. So there are some steps to getting there, um, but it it seems to meet our okay. needs at least. Yeah, the, the cost is right in line with what mm -hmm. that budget. Anyway, is there addition, I, the 5,200 is for the animal control officer, is there additional I cost? I believe there is. So that's the, another thing I had to find out. I didn't, I just talked to Jim on uh, Thursday and I didn't have a chance to call on Friday to find out if they would be willing, first of all, to provide services and how much those uh, uh, animal inspection services are. So I can, uh, we can follow up on that. So we okay. pay the list until we- Yeah, can we yeah. put, can put stuff for two weeks? That would still get us in and before April 1st. You can yeah. review the contract and you can, right. you know, make sure that it suits your needs and everything, so. Right, so. Uh, yeah, okay, so we will type, move this over to mm -hmm. our next meeting yeah. for discussion of both of these items. Mm -hmm. uh, under D&E on today's agenda. Okay, next item to review, discuss, and vote on a letter of support for 
CFP purchase of property off Long Plain Road? Uh, this one, there it, it was not a lot of detail um, in this letter about who owns the property. Um, and I kind of wanted the, I emailed the contact person. I'm not sure he hadn't gotten back to us that I had seen about um, who owns this land. Um, and so it was, it's a little hard to make a decision on this. I was hoping to have the, that information for this meeting, but, um, okay, so why don't we, if we don't we'll, have all, we'll, the, yeah, we all the data, it. I was just, just, I was just hoping that we'd have that information for you to discuss. We can so. just hold this over for the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any objections with that? Nope. Okay. So. That is held over for the next meeting. Uh, okay, that's it for new business. Select board liaison updates. Uh, all I've got is at a meeting, Zoom meeting today with Keith and people from Western Sampson with a very preliminary idea for a highway department garage. It was much larger and more expensive than we had anticipated. And essentially we've told them to go back and tear it down considerably. <laughs> uh, it would have been a lovely building, but A, we didn't have the room for it, and B, we don't have the money for it. Aside from that, great. Uh, that's all that I have for now. Really uh, attended a water um, meeting last week, and there's nothing new to report there. Chugging along. Uh, Joyce, any meetings in Sweden with, that we should know about? Mm, no, no well, meetings are on Zoom, of course. But, uh, <laughs> we we about the personnel committee meeting. <laughs> yeah, you, I assume you're not talking about the uh, uh, Metallurgical Society meeting from last week that I went no, to. No, That's, <laughs> you know, no slight board liaison related things. Okay. Uh, town administrative updates from either Lynn or welcome to well, Trisha yeah. Benchazy yeah. at her first. <laughs> In a while. Yeah. 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 I know, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 27 years since I've been here. Wait, wait, see, I've been working. We're talking about the milk bottle. Right. <laughs> Some Some back never around. Let's do yeah. it. Always come back. Um, just a couple of notes. Uh, uh, JP has applied for a, a citizen to firefighters grant for 200000 for um, breathing apparatus for the fire department. Right now, their breathing apparatus is obsolete, let's say, um, still functional, but obsolete. Uh, and so that's what they're asking for. I think he's also included that on a capital plan. That's 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 it yeah. does, this doesn't get approved. Um, historically, AFG grants are very, very competitive, but many times um, a, a thing like breathing apparatus it, is and and because of the age of our present stuff, it kind of moves up the priority list. So right. hopefully we'll I, we'll. I I think we'll be very much hoping that she gets a grant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and uh, we got a letter about Chapter ninety being approved in the amount of one hundred forty two thousand seven hundred fifty seven dollars and ninety six cents. What was last year's figure? Oh, oh I'm sorry, I didn't <laughs> look that up. Um, I, it seems it was close to that. I'm unsure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but Keith can. Yeah, no, I know Keith that the, the, <laughs> the, the governor has been looking to put extra money they to can, Chapter 9 yet. I just want to know if it was yeah, any Yeah, most years year. they've been asking, like, adding like 3% mm -hmm. um, to the previous amount. So I think it is just a smidgen more, but not, not a lot. Okay. So. Anything else? Insurance. Um, the insurance. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the insurance. That's something I sent to you guys at a later time. I got this in the mail, um, and it looks like they're wanting us to 
uh, sign this for a period starting April 1st, 2024, uh, for a full year to April 1st, 2025. What instance is for? It's for the Center School. school. So I figured we might as well talk about it um, since we were talking about the Center School. So you do have an option. Yes. You have to obviously renew it yeah. because you're still on it as of April 1st. Yes. But if you should um, sell or transfer the property, you cancel the property, you'll get a refund with the 25% premium um, during the year. So um, you'll pay 12 months. But should we still not own the property come in June March 31st of 2020? I see the paperwork. Okay. I have the. Um, Do we have the number? I'm sorry, what? We have the, 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 the dollar amount. The dollar amount. I'm unsure. I have cost. the original document. Um, so, so I just made a copy of that original document. If it's not in there, I'm unsure why that would have It wouldn't I be. I don't see it. Uh, it's not, I don't see the, the dollar amount, but I am actually meeting with Emma yes. tomorrow okay. um, to do a risk assessment, the, the yearly okay. risk assessment. Um, okay. So I can get that to here. It looks like we also have an option of purchasing or not purchasing terrorism coverage. Yes. <laughs> um, You're interested. I think, I think might... in that particular building, you Probably. <laughs> I think well, we, that would solve so, all of our so problems. I don't think it's a prime target. Let's not that way. I don't think so either. And the milk bottle itself wouldn't be covered under that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, why well, don't then you'll come back. I think it ends. So you'll you'll come back to we'll the, back the, that, the, the next meeting that'll still be before the April first mm -hmm. yeah. deadline. Anybody have anything else? No. Um, I have a yes. meeting tomorrow to discuss a uh, potential for shared conversation in the morning. Oh, good. Oh, good. Some towns. So yeah. we don't know who's going to show up. <laughs> good. But that would be good. Thank you. That's one motion to adjourn. I move the adjourn. <laughs> Joyce is seconding. Yes. Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.